Hello, um, I want to go through a sequence of images that I've collected from Astronomy Picture of the Day and elsewhere. Um, I'm going to start with this one. This is um, somebody's astro photo they had taken using a um, clearly a just a large lens. Um, you can go to the link and learn more about this guy, Harold Strauss, um, just an astrophotographer who likes to post what he does. This is a picture of M57, Messier 57. When you look through even a fairly large portable telescope, what it looks like is a star with a hole in it. And if it's dark sky and your eyes have adjusted, it doesn't look like a normal color star. It actually has a little bit of a greenish tint. Let me change my color so I have something that will show up. So this thing right here is not a star per se, but it's what's left over after a star, very similar to our sun, has exhausted all of its possible fusion. And this represents a very transient stage in the end stages of a star's life. Um, when we look at a much bigger picture of it, these are the colorful ring-style nebula that we can observe uh, that the Hubble takes beautiful pictures of. Um, we see lots of vivid rainbows of colors. So lots of red on the outsides, which we know now is hydrogen. But then there's lots of greens and yellows and blues and a whole array of other colors, which are due to the, the many different elements that are produced when a star goes through a process of fusion. And these are the layers of the star, essentially the guts of the star, um, being expelled off into space because there is no more fusion taking place in the, the center of the star. This white thing, whitish blue thing right there, that's the leftover core of what was once a star. So over the eons of a star's life, a star like our sun, hydrogen will fuse into helium and then helium will fuse into carbon, maybe some oxygen, maybe some slightly heavier stuff. But when stars like our sun get to fusing something into carbon and oxygen, the fusion stops there. And what happens is the, the temperature in the core drops, but in the process of fusing everything to oxygen, it had pushed most of itself, most of the layers that was once the, the compact star um, outwards. And so when the fusion actually stops, you're left with this thing the size of the Earth, approximately. Um, very dense, made up mostly of carbon and oxygen atoms, and it's still hot because it was a fusion reactor. And then over the next many uh, billions, tens and hundreds of billions of years, it will cool off going from white down to yellow to orange to red, and eventually uh, won't be visible anymore. Um, but again, it's not doing any active processes. It's a it's the remains of the fusion reactor of a star. Um, there's lots of other examples of these things. Here's a, a more zoomed out version, looking at all the hydrogen that has been expelled into space. The same thing, the ring nebula. Ring nebula. Um, the ring name is actually a misnomer. It is a spherical shell, draw a little sphere around a point. So this the point right here in the middle would represent the white dwarf, I'll abbreviate it WD. Um, and all the, the layers that was once the star, they're being pushed out by all the ultraviolet light that's being emanated from this cooling off husk of a nuclear reactor of a star. Um, it's spherical. But when we look from one angle, I'll draw the technical diagram for an observation point, a cross-section of an eyeball. Um, the line of sight here actually has only two layers of stuff to go through. Well, the white dwarf as well, but maybe if we go along through here, we have, if we consider this as a transparent shell or a translucent shell, there's actually less material to see through when you're looking more towards the center of it than when you're looking towards the edges of it. So when we look towards the edges of a expanding shell of gas that was once a star, um, we see more light blocked. So from our perspective, these things look like rings. Um, they're more translucent in the center, uh, less so on the edges. 
it'd be like if you looked at a transparent ball, um, you could see the edges more clearly than you could see uh, the middle part of it. There's many other examples of these. Um, they get these cool names, they're all pretty colors, the Helix Nebula. Um, I really like this. This was a 2011 posted on Astronomy Picture of the Day at the Planetary Nebula Project. What this represents um, is a whole bunch of different types or different examples of planetary nebula. Um, the notion, the name planetary nebula is actually a misnomer as well. Uh, centuries ago when these were first observed, um, astronomers thought they were they were the beginnings of a solar system, hence they would form planets and they called them planetary nebula, assuming they would form new solar systems. But now we know it's complete opposite. This is the leftovers of what was once a star and perhaps had planets and who knows what happened to those planets. Um, this ring or this circle right here represents the size of the, the full moon. And so this gives you a size comparison when looking at these things through telescopes. So remember the full moon, uh, if you hold your arm or your pinky at arm's length, um, it takes up only half your pinky. So a full pinky fingernail would probably look like that in front of any one of those. Um, there is a link that I encourage you to go to um, as we wrap up this unit on uh, stellar physics and stellar evolution. Um, it's from a website called Hyperphysics, um, and it goes through the main sequence, the AHR diagram, the projected future of our sun, just another version of the same story that we've been going through this past month. Um, what I want you to do right now is finish up the last page of the HR diagram lab. Um, so uh, you can stop here, go work on that lab. Once you finish it, then you'll go back to the next video.